The Honorable Angelina Tan is hereby recognized. Maraming salamat po, Madam Speaker, my dear colleagues, mga kaibigan, parang kailan lang nang sinalubong natin ang panibagong taon na puno ng pag-asa. At ngayon po, halos hindi na natin napansin na dalawang buwan na pala ang nalaga sa kalendaryo at ngayon nga ay buwan na naman ng Marso. And so, I wish to beg your kind indulgence for having to take the floor amid the continuing struggle of various sectors in the country against COVID-19 health crisis in order to pay homage to every woman who collectively constitute an important sector in our society but remains, even up to this day, this very moment, to be socially oppressed, disadvantaged, and discriminated. This year's National Women's Month celebration, which serves as a tribute, a platform, and a call to action that highlights the extraordinary roles of everyone else in the society as trailblazers and harbingers of change, has Juana laban sa pandemia, kaya as its theme. Kaya naman po ako ngayon ay tumatayo, hindi lamang bilang tagapanguna sa Committee on Health ng ating kapulungan, kundi bilang isang alagad ng medesina at bilang isa at kaisa na mapagpalayang sektor ng mga kababaihan sa ating bansa upang talakayin ang mga hamon at pagtugon ng mga kababaihan sa panahon ng pandemya. According to an article from The Lancet, COVID-19, the gendered impacts of the outbreak, and I quote, Policies and public health efforts have not addressed the gendered impacts of disease outbreaks. The response to coron coronavirus disease 2019 appears no different. We are not aware of any gender analysis of the outbreak by the global health institutions or governments in affected countries or in preparedness phases. Recognizing the extent to which disease outbreaks affect women and men differently in a fundamental step to understanding the primary and secondary effects of a health emergency on different individuals and communities and for creating effective, equitable policies and interventions, and of quote. Madam Speaker, it has been said that COVID-19 has not been an equal opportunity virus as, as it goes after people in poor health and those whose daily lives expose them to greater contact with others. It is therefore unfortunate that in the face of inequality, bigotry, and chauvinism that is, that is so prevalent in our times, women bear the brunt of public health emergencies like COVID-19. Kakaiba ang tama ng mga disease outbreaks tulad ng COVID-19 sa ating mga kababaihan, hindi dahil mas mahina sila kundi dahil kakaiba ang turing sa kanila. Ito rin ang sinasabi sa artikulo na aking binasa kanina, although sex disaggregated data for COVID-19 show equal numbers of cases between men and women so far, there seem to be sex differences in mortality and vulnerability to the disease. Emerging evidence suggests that more men than women are dying, potentially due to sex-based immunological or gender differences, such as patterns and prevalence of smoking. However, current sex-disaggregated data are incomplete, cautioning against early assumptions. Simultaneously, data from State Council Information Office in China suggests that more than 90% of healthcare workers in Yubei province are women, emphasizing the gendered nature of health workforce and the risk that predominantly female health workers incur. The closure of schools to control COVID-19 transmission in China, Hong Kong, Italy, South Korea, and beyond might have a differential effect on women who provide most of the informal care within families with a consequence of limiting their work and economic opportunities. Travel restrictions cause financial challenges and uncertainty for mostly female foreign domestic workers, many of whom travel in Southeast Asia between Philippines, 
Indonesia, Hong Kong, and Singapore. Consideration is further needed of the gendered implications of quarantine, such as whether women and men's different physical, cultural, security, and sanitary needs are recognized. Dito sa atin, ang mga kababaihan at mga batang babae ay naharap hindi lang sa isang nakamamatay na krisis pang kalusugan, kundi na rin sa isang hindi dapat ipagwalang bahalang problema ng violence against women's, women and girls, paglabag sa karapatang pantao, kawalang siguridad sa ekonomiya, kasama na ang mahal o di kaya hindi sapat na serbisyong pangkalusugan. Ang mga problema ang matagal ng kinakaharap ng sektor ng kababaihan ay mas lalo pang pinatindi ngayon sa gitna ng COVID-19. Mga kasama, according to the Philippine National Police, in the period of quarantine between March 15 and April 2, there were 391 cases of violence against women and 42 cases of rape reported. At dahil marami ang nawala ng trabaho at kabuhayan, may mga napaulat rin na online gender-based violence gaya ng pornografiya at iba pang uri ng sexual exploitation, lalo na sa mga kabataang babae. Sinasabing ang mga datos patungkol sa gender-based violence sa ilalim ng quarantine sa bansa ay maaaring mas mababa dahil na rin sa tinatawag na mobility at transportation restrictions at pagkakakulong ng maraming kababaihan at batang babae sa kanilang mga tahanan. Ayon sa isang lathalain, Gender Snapshot, COVID-19 in the Philippines, under COVID-19, Filipino women's exposure to harassment and discrimination has increased, including reports of healthcare workers facing discrimination such as refusal to basic services and transport. Mahalaga rin itong tingnan sa konteksto ng isang pag-aaral ng Philippine Institute of Development Studies na nagsasabing mukhang papunta na raw tayo ngayon patungo sa tinatawag na greater feminization sa dating traditional na male-dominated healthcare professionals tulad ng pagiging doktor at physiotherapists. Ayon sa mga datos, 56.9% ng mga manggagamot ngayon ay mga kababaihan habang 61.9% are ang therapist. Ibig sabihin nito, mas lalong lantad ngayon ang mga kababaihan sa harassment at discrimination dahil malaking bilang, malaking bilang nila ang bumubuo sa ating kasalukuyang medical or health frontliners. Mar marami rin mga kababaihan ang napaulat na nakaranas ng sexual harassment sa ating COVID-19 checkpoints at iba pang uri ng pangaabuso at karahasan sa gitna ng kasalukuyang krisis pang kalusugan. Ilan lamang po ito sa mga datos at pangyayari na nagpapakita ng mga hamong kinakaharap ngayon ng ating mga kababaihan sa gitna ng pandemya. But in spite of the challenges confronting women, Madam Speaker and dear colleagues, women in the country and all over the world has shown time and again, especially now under the lingering shadows of this pandemic, that they will not only survive, but overcome. Ernest Hemingway, must be thinking of women when he wrote these lines in his novel, A Farewell to Arms, and this is what he said. The world breaks everyone, and afterward, many are strong at the broken places. The pandemic and all its massive brokenness, <clears throat> deaths, and suffering that's withstanding Women the world over have emerged stronger and better and have responded to the crisis with more vigor, vision, and vividness. The Harvard Business Review has recently published that women are better leaders during a crisis. The Guardian has a similar take to this. Female-led countries handled coronavirus better. Maybe some would ask why. 
And the answer, according to the New York Times, is that because the presence of a female leader may be a signal that a country has more inclusive political institutions and values. Varied information sources and leaders with the humility to listen to outside voices are crucial for successful pandemic response. Having a female leader is one signal that people of diverse backgrounds and thus hopefully diverse perspectives on how to combat crisis are able to win seats at the table. Sabi naman ng isang artikulo, women leaders tend to slightly outperform men all the time, but the difference grew larger during the crisis. And their findings boil down to a simple conclusion. Women leaders are seen as more empathetic. COVID-19 breaks everyone, Madam Speaker. And afterward, women are strong at the places broken by this pandemic. Noon pa man ay sinabi na rin ni Luwalhati Bautista, isang Pilipinang manunulat, nobelista at aktivista. Pero ang babae, ang tao for that matter, talian man ang katawan o suutan ng chastity belt ay may uri ng kalayaang hindi mananakaw ng kahit sino ang kalayaan niyang mag-isip. Ironically, while women are considered highly vulnerable to the current COVID-19 pandemic, they are, on the other hand, the most powerful agents of change when it comes to pandemic's response. One reason is that women's perspectives and values, their being empathetic perhaps, specifically with regards to protecting and caring, are somewhat different than, than men's. Women in the time of COVID-19 unselfishly contribute their time, skills, and energy to care for the sick and improve the plight of their families and develop their communities. Women's unique role in the family and society provides them indigenous knowledge and skills in dealing with crisis, which enables them to become potent agents of change in mitigating the risk and effects of the pandemic. The impact of public health emergencies like COVID-19 will largely depend on the choices we make on how we treat our women. To me, this is plain simple. We protect public health when we protect women's health. We uphold the rights of the future generations to a healthy living when we uphold women's rights and we reduce the risk of COVID-19 when we reduce the risk of gender inequality. Madam Speaker, an integral part of our ongoing bayanihan laban sa pandemia should support efforts to mainstream gender and questioning the impact of COVID-19 COVID pandemic and to achieve gender equality in governance and ultimately end violence against women and girls. May I therefore urge every honorable representative in this August chamber to join all women in pursuit of their cause, for it is only in doing so that we will be able to ensure a truly healthier and sustainable future for all Filipinos. Maraming salamat po at magandang hapon sa inyong lahat.